Leafs win. Game five, two to one in overtime. We live to see another game. There will be hockey Thursday. There will be hockey Saturday. I don't know why I felt so confident, even though Austin Matthews isn't going to play after game four. But on top of that, they just look insanely better than game four. Welcome, everyone, to the Rink Rat Report podcast. This is a solo podcast. This is going to be, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to keep myself in check after that one. Matthew Nyes from John Tavares in the overtime frame on a net drive from John Tavares after a massive save from Joseph Wall. What a performance from the Leafs. Like Insanely gutsy. I mean, how many... I was going to say how many other teams could respond like that, but, I mean, Tampa Bay t- kind of did go to the Stanley Cup Finals with no Braden Point for how many rounds? So uh, I'll zip it on that point right there. But first line Max Domi gets it done. Are you kidding me? I There were some bumps. There were definitely some bumps in this game. But they held through. They didn't give up the penalty kill goals. They didn't take insanely stupid penalties in this one. Joseph Wool was awesome. He was lights out in this one. The only goal against was just a really shitty bounce. One inside of the post. Once one shot that was inside of the post, guess what? Doesn't even count as a shot on goal. So who cares? He was a real difference maker in this one. And you know what? Swayman credit to him played really well as well. That save on Riley that he made was really, really good. Um, I think there was a crossbar in there as well that the least gets. So kind of crosses out on the crossbars in these in these games here. But nevertheless, regarding our contest, as I said, there is a game six, and I'm going to make sure. Well, they actually they better. They kind of promised me. SVP Sports is upping the offer. I will allow extra entries. If you entered the, after game one. Comment for game two, it's an extra entry. We're doing the Leafs jersey and I believe a hat. Maybe something else. Maybe something bigger. Call my guy tomorrow, Matthew Miele. Matthew, the price just went up. Give the people what they need. So that's from Sivu Play Sports. That's from SVP Sports right there. The one thing coming into this game that we were curious about that I do want to take a quick little look at before we get any further was the zone starts. They gave Bertuzzi, Matthews, and Marner a ton of offensive zone starts. For that matter, offensive face-offs, offensive zone face-offs, 12, defensive zone face-offs, one. So really different utilization of Mitch Marner in this one. Oh, he was more noticeable in this one. Oh, wow. I wonder how that works out. Huh. So wait. So wait, so wait, just bear with me right here. He doesn't get buried in the defensive zone this game, and he's more noticeable. Ah, that's pretty interesting. See how that works? Huh. In terms of the defensive zone faceoffs, I mean, the Leafs didn't have too, too many, it looks like. The heaviest line in terms of defensive zone faceoffs ended up being the Nylander, Nyes, Tavares one, but they had four offensive zone faceoffs, five defensive zone. I think we'll actually probably get a better better idea in terms of zone starts because that's where, you know, face off, you ice it, and that counts as a a face off. But defensive zone starts, yeah, only four was the highest amount and it was Benoit McCabe Nylander. So a bit of a different utilization from Sheldon Keith. It, it's not out of the ordinary from what we've seen in the regular season. We did see Nylander Tavares as a pairing. I I Looked it up. It's about 52% offensive zone starts, so nothing crazy. But it's very, very clear that they want Domi, Bertuzzi, whoever they're with, start in the offensive zone. I am a little bit surprised that they didn't put Marner on different lines to try to switch it up, but I guess, I mean, you can't really do that. You want to keep some continuity, right? So interesting to see how that start that was there. It will also be interesting to see if the Leafs have to start more in the defensive zone. Like who do they who do they give the heavy heavy lifting to? Do they continue to give that to Nylander and Tavares? 
Who knows? We'll see. We will have to see. Wait and see on Thursday, I guess. But in this game, I thought this was, in terms of skaters, this was some of the best work I've seen from Max Tomey. Uh, he generated two two-on-ones. He himself took zero shots. Just insanely frustrating. <laughs> uh, the, the second two-on-one to Tyler Bertuzzi, everyone and their grandmother knew that he was passing that to Tyler Bertuzzi. And it was just a really easy say, uh, read, sorry, from Jeremy Swayman. Eyes up on the net. Give, like, give the goalie, make it look like you're going to shoot. Because otherwise, the goalie, if the goalie's read is easier, if he knows, okay, he's passing it from here to there, it's insanely easy to get across with good timing, get to your spot so that you're centered to the shot and you're square to the shot, as opposed to if he is unsure and he has to respect the shot from Max Domi, then he's going to be a hair late getting over. And then he's not as square. He's not as centered, you know. It causes a little bit more havoc, unfortunately. Max Domi is who he is. He is really, really, really a pass-first guy, as we have seen from him this past year. But otherwise, I mean, he was awesome this game. I thought he was really, really good. I thought that line was a great example, especially in the first period, of doing a better job of keeping cycles alive as opposed to just firing garbage on net. Other, I mean, I will say this. Joel Edmondson did that more than a few times tonight. That's just Joel Edmondson. Here's the thing. Do you want Joel Edmondson to be making passes across the blue line? Not really. Do I want him maybe to rim it around the boards? Yeah. I'd rather that. It's, it's about this. I mean, I don't know. The muffins on net. That, guy, that guy's just an offensive killer. Another good game from uh, Timothy Logren tonight. He was really moving the puck really well. Again, keeping cycles alive in the offensive zone. That was a good response game from Timothy Logren, I will say. Who was my favorite player tonight? Uh, a little bias, I would say. I would probably say Joseph Wool. Joseph Wool, just an outstanding performance in this one. What else can I say? A huge clutch save in overtime. Huge clutch save. Another clutch save, I should say. Let's mix up the English vocabulary here, Joe. On Trent Frederick late in the third period, to sh the stretch out save there was phenomenal. Um, his second or third shot of the game was off of the rush. It went to his name, Jesper Bokvis, number 70 on Boston, who that play involved an insane amount of patience because. The pass is coming off the rush to the middle. If he slides, he's done. He's out. But he stays on his feet, stays patient, stays with them, is able to play the deke, made it look like it was nothing. That was not a nothing chance. That was a great chance. It was a good move. Could not fool him. Won't be fooled again, just like the song says. Um, anyone watching on YouTube, which you should be, I am wearing my Kessel jersey backwards. I don't know. I hadn't worn it backwards the first four games and I wasn't insanely happy with the performance. So, and I chose Kessel tonight because as crazy as this is going to sound, needed some inspiration today. The Leafs twice have come back from three down, one leads to make it three, three in a series against Boston, 2018 and 2013. Unfortunately, let's not talk about, I don't remember what happened the, the game after in game seven. I, um, yeah, I don't I don't remember. Don't remind me. I don't care. But so we're at three, two. One game at a time. That's all it takes. One game at a time. Maybe you get Matthews back. You look much better. Maybe you don't. Who knows? All that matters, the players that are playing are the players that are playing. And you got a good performance from I'd say I'd say a good amount of them tonight. Now what needs to change? Was it a perfect performance tonight? No. Thought it was solid. Good enough to win. You had more shots. Probably chances overall. Eh, like high danger chances. I think you traded them. 
pretty evenly ish. Maybe Boston had a few, maybe one or two more high danger chances from Boston, but the puck possession 1000% went all the way to the Leafs. 100%. Great first period from them, which you really, really needed on the road. Um, some stats in that first period scoring chances for versus against eight to two for the Leafs, nine to eight in the second, and then five to nine in the third period, which, you know, makes sense. The third period kind of went Boston's way, unfortunately. But you know what? Ben, don't break. Ben, don't break. Expected goals wise, oh, my five on five. This is pretty much an even, even game 49.64 in favor of the like off by 0.36%. So I thought it was a very, very even game back and forth. Uh, unfortunately, the power play couldn't get it done. It looked okay. Still would like John to, the same issues. There was a couple same issues as last game that I will get into very, very shortly. Actually, why uh, we'll get into them after this message from our friends over at Draft Kings. The chase for the Stanley Cup is on. And if you're looking to light the lamp, nothing beats the action at Draft Kings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. From the start of the playoff beers all the way till hosting of hoisting of the cup DraftKings sportsbook has you covered with same game parlays live betting odds boosts and so much more i believe i saw the stanley cup favorites are the carolina hurricanes at plus 400 plus 475 i think was florida uh, don't bet on those guys because um they suck but anyways drown download drown load download the DraftKings sportsbook app and use code thpn new just bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's code THPN only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Or in West Virginia, visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 8778-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit CCPG or... Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. CDKNG.co slash ICE for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Copyright NHL 2024. All rights reserved. So let's get into it. What happened last game? Um, what happened last game that kind of still happened this game? Well, on the power play, the first entry that they got actually went to Tavares on the left side, which Boston is funneling the Leafs to that left side. When the Leafs are coming down the left, their left side, where Tavares is, is on that side. He, they're, they're looking for him to get that puck. And unfortunately it just resulted in the, it was a failure. I can't remember 100% if it was stopped at the blue. I don't think it was stopped at the blue line. He tried to rim it around. It didn't, it didn't work, and it just went back the other way. Again, need to – Savars has just got to do a better job of on those entries there. He's got to move that puck quicker, and they have to game plan for it and give him the support so that he's able to make an easier play – off of that entry there because they're waiting for it. They're funneling him right to that corner, giving him the tiniest bit of space inside of the blue line and then forcing him to make a difficult play. You have to support him with essentially you like, you almost want to overload that side. Wouldn't you You want to overload it? So then you have a second support guy there. So the Tavares is able a second support guy that's coming in with speed. So then Tavares is able to just make a chip in and then you start the power play from there. I understand that they they want to dome off at the entries because Matthews is a big part of the power play entries. So that kind of made sense there. I thought Bertuzzi did do a good job in front of the net, though. So I don't know, maybe off of a face off, they try Bertuzzi, but then that just creates a lot of that's it's there's too many moving parts there. So I guess we'll probably see Domi there next game. I'm going to be honest. I'm not anticipating Austin Matthews next game, but that's neither here nor there. The other issue that I saw, 
Um, why am I drawing a blank on this one? Anyways, things I saw better. Let's start with that before most things I saw better. Let's check in with what I thought later. I don't know. Everything's everything's fallen out of my mind, essentially. I mean, this is a post-game solo episode. This is these are not easy to do. Anywho, what went well for the Leafs? As I mentioned, dumb penalties, goaltending, 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 I think covered up a lot of mistakes. Riley, as I mentioned, that big save by Wool, one of the first of the game, that was Riley was late getting to his assignment there. And Joseph Wool was forced to make a big save. Uh, there was a giveaway at the blue line that forced the late save in the third period. Uh, it got a little scrambly for the Leafs in the third. Like it didn't make you feel great. I think the wind kind of got knocked out of their sails. I think Boston is catching on to the, you know, the, the uh, as I mentioned in a previous episode where the defensemen get the puck, the forwards try to stretch the zone and the defenseman just rims it around. You're not seeing that too, too much. And a, a couple times you are seeing the, the winger kind of come back late on the puck. Maybe that was just once or like something, a little, little something I noticed there. Essentially, the exits in the third period, I think, were not good enough, we'll say. But overall in the game, I thought they were okay. Took a little bit for Nylander to get going. I, I, I really think the migraines are affecting him. but. Like a couple shifts, it looked like he was not ready for the puck. But then, but then there was the play in the second period. He absolutely just jitterbugs two defense, uh, jitterbugs a defenseman, jitters another defenseman, just cut, 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 just in display of his display of hands a couple times in this game was just silly on small, small plays. It's hands and skating are just ridiculous on the kid. But it looked like it took a couple shifts to get going there. I, I think the migraines were affecting him a little because there's a couple passes. It just didn't look like he was ready. Which, I mean, when you're playing in a building that loud, that many lights, I think a migraine issue. I've never had one, but wouldn't. I don't think the doctor would be recommending that. But in a, overall, okay game from him. You had a couple setups here and there. I thought that were were pretty good. Unfortunately, one went to Joel Edmondson. <sighs> that guy. He's going to score now that I said all this. But I'm not. Yeah, as I've said, I'm not a Joel Edmondson fan. Just doesn't doesn't move the puck. Does Wastes offensive zone possessions. Doesn't move the puck very well. And for how bad he is at doing those things, he's not mean enough in my opinion. He doesn't smother defensive plays enough, doesn't move well enough, but he's the best that you got right now. So, so looking forward to game six. I don't think you're going to get as slow of a Boston team. Maybe you are. You're on home ice. You should, theoretically. You know what? It's going to be a, a we're going to get a home ice win. A road to a home ice win. I feel it in my bones that Thursday is going to be a home ice win. I'm going to come back on this mic. And we're going to be talking about game seven. And we're going to be talking about SVP having to up the offer even more. Are you kidding me? Do you know how excited that makes me just, just thinking about that? That's how much better the, like these playoff podcast after a win oh my god and the numbers too i i think it must be a, a hell of a lot easier to listen to this shit after they win versus after they put forth you know a wet blanket type effort like they did in game four but go listen to game four actually go watch it on youtube because actually the clips in there i thought were pretty smart not to toot my own horn, but anywho, we don't know if Austin Matthews is going to be in. We don't know. I've, they're saying sick. 
I don't know. Maybe it's because he likes skateboarding. He's sick. <laughs> uh, I promise I won't make that joke every. No, I will. I, I got. I got one photoshopping me on that joke, and then I'm retiring. But some things to look for again. How does Boston start? It's kind of a cliche, whatever one. But the zone starts. Do they keep that the same? I mean the. There was not a lot of defensive zone starts for the Leafs in this one, it felt like. And the numbers kind of back it up. The fact that one line only had to split 50% is, is pretty surprising there. But it shows the Leafs had the puck. What does that show also in the numbers? It shows that the Leafs had the puck a lot in this game. What does that also mean? Oh, my God. Our fourth line got caved in on this one. Oof. Maybe they put in Noah Gregor. Because the Ryan Reeves experiment is not, not looking too good right now. It is kind of ridiculous, though, when you think about it. Like, six minutes left in the game. Do you want Ryan Reeves out there? Fourth line needs to take a turn. Six minutes. And you can't put a guy out there, and then now you have to shrink the bench to 11 willingly because you just have a guy that you know cannot play in that position. Like, no, Gregor's not the best player, but I think I'd rather him at this point. The, the, the toughness value of Reeves is just not shining through exactly at the moment. And I am kind of shocked that they kept him in after that first goal, kind of killed the momentum on home ice from him. Um, but yeah. In terms of the first goal from the Leafs tonight, I will say this. We've got two conflicting opinions. We had Rupp. We get his first name. Ryan Rupp? Anyways, Stanley Cup champion with the with the Devils. They were kind of, he was kind of saying Ben Washington have been looking to to put that up the middle to, to Ponce's homework, which is the breakout play. He was saying you're double under pressure, put it up the wall. Kevin Bieksa actually came back and said, no, that's not true. Well, he was saying it, they were, these were two separate things, but both former NHL. There's kind of an interesting discord there, but he was saying it's just, it's an unlucky play. It's off the skate of Patrick, uh, Patrick Maroon flies up into the air and lands on Trent Frederick's mm -hmm. stick. How many times do you think you could do that if you tried? It's It, it really is a... Uh, here's my take on it. It's interesting to listen to both of those. I don't know if Simone Benoit should be sending pucks up the middle. I just, I don't know if he has the facilities to do so. Um, I don't know if he should be... He like I think with him, you got to kind of keep it safer. And I think we will see that moving forward after that. It was shitty luck. It was shitty luck. I think that was the right play. I think that was the play that they were looking for. But that really, really was shitty luck from on Simon Benoit's part. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, the Leaf schools, I don't know, one was to the net and one was great net drive by John Tavares. But. So what more things to see from in game six, I will say this. Puck possession was awesome. I loved the puck possession. Shoot the damn puck. Marner and Domi, I, I kind of expected it, but oh, my God, when it hits, when it hits and when you have to watch it, Madonna, me, it, it's, it's insane. Marner, Mitch Marner had the entire faceoff dot open. He could have. Tooken it to the net, driven and taking a shot. Instead, he opted for the complicated cut across, wanted Callie Yarncroft to cross with him and then try to send it back. But the lane just wasn't there. And then Max Domi, two two on ones, and the guy shoot it once, catch everyone off by surprise. Just, I don't know. I feel like when. Like that second two on one, the amount of time and space he had and how slow, how much he slowed it down to was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. He completed a pass, which is very impressive, but that was some of the most, that was the most belligerent two on one I've ever seen in my life. 
so, so like, please someone from like mar don't want please someone has to decide i i will be the shooter tonight i'm going to shoot a couple of pucks on that we saw a good shot from marner off the face off too but please a shot because it was really good to see Max Domi generate odd man rushes. You haven't gotten a lot of odd man rushes for the Leafs in this series. A couple here and there. I think Matthews has had one. Like Nylander, that's who it was at the crossbar. He had a really good rush chance too. So he had some rush offense, but yeah. Anywho, game six. Joseph Wool between the pipes. Awesome Matthews hopefully lining up at center. Oh, boy. Game six, here we come, guys. This is, we live to see another day. Aren't sports fantastic? 3% of the time, I'd say. This is part of that 3%. Doesn't always happen. Damn it. Anywho, uh, use promo code man, uh, RinkRat. Manscaped.com. That is R I N K R A T. Manscaped.com. They have the lawnmower 5.0. Guys, I we keep telling you about this stuff. And why do we keep telling you about it? It's because it works, because it's fantastic. If I got a hundred thousand complaints, I like I wouldn't accept the money anymore. I would have cut them off. We've been with Manscaped for like three years now. I have not had one complaint. Everyone loves it. The packaging is even insane too. Manscaped.com, promo code RankRat. That is R-I-N-K-R-A-T. And look at that. I did an ad for them. And I didn't even read anything about my balls. So that one was for the people there. Any hoot. We'll be back here Thursday after the game. Comment on the video with who MVP of Game 5 was. And you will have an extra entry to win the jersey and the hat, and hopefully more. I'm going to push them, see how much. I'm going to shake them down. SVP Sports, how much more can they give Leafs Nation? But guess what? The Leafs are going to win Game 6. They're going to win Game 6, and I'll be back on the mic after that have to preview game seven and SVP. I'm going to have to come SVP sports. I'm going to have to come and shake them down some more for some more prizes for this contest. It ends at the end of the series. So comment for an extra entry Jersey and more. Thank you everyone for listening. Go Leafs go.